Hello everybody, Shimmer here, and today I will be bringing you a guide on vampirism in Elder Scrolls Online. There will be time links in the About section below, so if you want to skip over some parts, you can, but let's get to it. First, why become a vampire? Choosing to become a vampire will give you access to the vampire skill line, some advantages, and some disadvantages. The major advantages of becoming a vampire is having 10% magicka and stamina regen when vampire stage 2 or higher, 33% reduced damage taken when you are below 50% health when vampire stage 3 or higher, and ignored movement speed penalty while in crouch when vampire stage 4. Now you may be wondering what are all these stages? And this is where the disadvantages come into play for the vampire because you can't just get all these cool buffs without also getting debuffed. There are four stages to being a vampire. The higher the stage, the more of a vampire you are and the more you will benefit from the skill line. But there are some debuffs that you will receive for being a vampire. Every time you use a vampire ability, you put yourself farther and farther into the vampire stages and eventually max out at stage 4. If you do not use vampire abilities, you will go deeper and deeper into these stages over real time. Stage 4 vampire will have a penalty of 75% slower health recovery, you will take 25% additional damage from fire, and vampire abilities will cost 21% less. Stage 3 Vampire will have 50% slower health recovery, you will take 20% additional damage from fire, and Vampire abilities will cost 14% less. Stage 2 will have 25% slower health recovery, you will take 15% additional damage from fire, and Vampire abilities will cost 7% less. At Stage 1, you will have no benefits nor any deterrence. Stage 1 basically zeroes you out. So with the stages all laid, laid out, you can see that in order to get the Magicka and Stamina regen, you're going to have to be stage 2 or higher. And to get to the reduced damage while under 50% health, you will need to be Vampire Stage 3 or higher. To get the Stealth benefit, you're going to need to be stage 4. You will also notice your appearance will change. The look of your character will vary depending on what stage Vampire you are currently. The worst look is when you are stage 4 and will gradually get better until you are stage 1. Some of the cons that I listed, like the increased fire damage and health regen, can be remedied or neutralized with good champion point placement. Now like I said before, using vampire abilities or just having it go up over time is how you raise your vampire stage, but what if you want to lower it? You will have to feed on enemy NPCs, and you do this by sneaking up on an enemy and pressing X to feed. Now this can be annoying as it shares a synergy with Blade of Woe and can kind of get in the way, as it uses the same synergy and sometimes you will accidentally feed instead of Blade of Woe or vice versa. If you're on PC, there is an add-on you can download called Vampire's Woe to assist you in this. This add-on allows you to toggle either Blade of Woe or Feed for the synergy. Now if you don't want to feed to lower your stages, you can also purchase a drink called Double Bloody Mara. Drinking this drink will lower your vampire stage by one for each one consumed. Now this is also a drink buff food and increases your max magicka and health. So remember, if you want a different food buff to re-eat your normal food after lowering your vampire abilities. Now let's take a look at the Vampire Skill Line. The Vampire Skill Line has a very nice ultimate called Bat Swarm. This ability is an area effect and depending on the morph will either heal you for each enemy hit or teleport you to an enemy and hit them for a large amount of magic damage. You will also get two abilities, Mist Form, which transforms you into a mist, reducing your damage taken by 75%. While in this form, you are immune to disabling and immobilization effects. While in this form, you cannot be healed and your Magicka recovery is disabled. There are two morphs for this, Elusive Mist that grants major expedition, which increases your movement speed, and Baleful Mist that will deal damage to nearby enemies. The other ability is Drain Essence, which damages the enemy with magic damage while restoring health over 3 seconds and stuns the enemy. The morph options here are Invigorating Drain, which will add ultimate recovery of 5 for every 1 second over the course of 3 seconds, 
or accelerating drain, which grants minor expedition, which is in a, a movement speed increase. There are six passive skills, the first of which is Savage Feeding. This will add an off balance and stun to an enemy that you feed on. There are two ranks in this. The next passive is Supernatural Recovery. This has two ranks and when you spend both points in this, you will receive the 10% Magicka and Stamina Regen. The next passive is Blood Ritual. This will allow you to bite another player and infect them with vampirism and turn them into a vampire at once every seven days. The next passive is Undeath. And this passive has two ranks. When you spend both points in this, you will reduce your damage taken by 33% when under 50% health. The next passive is Unnatural Resistance. This passive reduces the severity of the health recovery determined in Vampire Stages 2 to 4. The last passive is Dark Stalker. This passive ignores the movement penalty while in crouch and decreases the time it takes to crouch by 50% during the night when you are Vampire Stage 4. So now that we've gone over the pros and cons of being a vampire and the skill line and how to increase or decrease your vampire stages, and all this still sounds great to you, now let's talk about how to become a vampire. There are a couple ways to go about this, the first of which is the original way of becoming one, and that is to wait for a specific time in game for specific mobs called blood fiends to appear. They only appear at night and in specific areas of Bankarai, the Rift, and Reaper's March. You have to start a fight with one and get them to use their blood ritual ability on you to infect you. Even when you do find a blood fiend, they may or may not use this ability on you and is not guaranteed. To be honest, this method is a lot of waiting around for the exact right time to be online and is just unpredictable and not worth the time. So alternatively, you can become infected by another player that has the blood ritual passive. Players with points spent in this can bite other players once every seven days. To bite another player or to be bitten, you will need to travel to the vampire shrine. The shrines are located here in Bankarai, here in the Rift, and here in Reaper's March. Once you are bitten by another player, you will see a scroll on top of a sarcophagus. Click on that to start the quest. Once you complete the quest, you will gain the vampire skill line. You can also purchase the vampire skill line from the crown store for 1500 crowns. If you do purchase it from the crown store, you won't have to do the quest. Now the great part about leveling vampire is all you need to do is earn XP. That's it. You don't even need to have abilities slotted unless you're trying to level one of the vampire abilities. The skill line gets XP as you earn XP. So even if you do have abilities slotted and you accidentally turn in a quest and you're on the long bar, don't worry, your skill line will still get contributed XP. Now what if you decide that you don't want to be a vampire anymore and you want to cure it? Now there are two ways you can cure it. The first is by paying 800 crowns, which is silly, don't do this. You will need to find an NPC called Prelate Sabanus in the Mages Guild in Ralka, Evermore, or Riften. You can speak to him, pay a small amount of gold, and then poof, you're cured. Now some tips and tricks for Vampire. Again, download that Vampire's Woe add-on so that you're not constantly fighting over the feed or blade of woe synergy as it's super duper annoying. I'll link that add-on below in the about section. For leveling it, I recommend if you're going to become a vampire to do it early so that you're leveling the skill line while you're leveling your character because it does take some time to level it. Again, you won't need to slot abilities to increase your skill line XP, but you will need to slot those abilities if you want to level the abilities. For morphs on the mist, I recommend elusive mist as no one really uses the other morph, but the reason the elusive mist is so powerful in PvP is if you are rooted, you can click on that and poof, you're unrooted and taking 75% less damage and can escape very quickly with the major expedition buff. For Bat Swarm, I recommend using Devouring Swarm as it heals you for every enemy hit and a damage dealing heal is pretty darn awesome. 
For the drain, I recommend Invigorating Drain for the Ulti regen. I personally don't use this ability at all, but that's just my playstyle. Between the two, the Invigorating Drain is the most useful. And that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and sub if you enjoyed, or if it helped you out any, and click that bell icon to be notified when I go live. Y'all have a great day, and I'll see you in Tamriel. Bye!